What's up everyone, Cole Caparoon here. Thank you for stopping by for another video. I really appreciate it. Now YouTube is continuing to suggest to me that I need to ask more of you to subscribe because like 80% of you guys that watch aren't subscribed. So if you wouldn't mind, it would mean the world to me if you would hit the subscribe tab and the bell icon next to it and give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment on this one. But if you didn't like it, make sure you smash that thumbs down twice. So we've been seeing the rhetoric for quite some time now that rock is dead. And I'm sure if you clicked on this video, like myself, you are into rock and metal. Now full disclosure, for those of you that don't know me, I'm a producer and a mix engineer and a session guitarist. I'm here in Nashville, Tennessee. I've been fortunate to work on quite a bit of successful music and a massive percentage of that successful music was rock. And probably the first 10 years of my career was straight rock and straight metal. So my background is all rock and all metal, so I'm not just here trash talking a genre. And then also those of you that know me and have watched this channel before, you know that I always try to spin this stuff in a positive way. So the point of this video is if you are in a rock or a metal band, here are six reasons why rock is dead. And in going over this stuff, my hopes is that you can avoid some of this and help you make your rock or metal band more successful. Reason number one, lack of evolution. Unfortunately, most of the rock music that has come out for quite some time is all extremely similar. We're kind of in this weird place where a lot of stuff has just been done already. And so admittedly, it's very hard to be unique and new and fresh within the rock genre because so much stuff has already been done. However, I think lack of evolution plays a major role in the decline of the rock genre as a whole. So I think if rock bands and artists and metal artists focus on doing something unique and fresh and something people haven't heard before, that will go a long ways in making some people more interested Interested in you as an artist. Reason number two, songwriting that appeals to a very narrow demographic of people. Now when we're talking about songwriting, it's everything from lyrical content, how relatable are your lyrics. Most other popular genres now have pretty relatable lyrics. If you're still singing about, you know, dragons and dwarfs and whatever. <laughs> you know, that only appeals to a very narrow demographic of people. And so it's entirely possible to play the, the heaviest of European power metal or whatever your thing is and still have lyrical content that relates to a wide demographic of people. Another thing that is really common within the rock and metal genres is extremely long songs, extremely long intros, and you know, just big chunks of a song that doesn't really serve a purpose and doesn't really need to be there. Which leads me into point number three, competing with other music and other genres that are curated for people with short attention spans. Now this is a little bittersweet for me because on one hand, I'd like to think that people still could rock out to a six minute song and not think twice about it. Personally, I grew up on Dream Theater. You know, Change of Seasons was like 32 minutes long and it was one of my favorite pieces of music in my early 20s. But unfortunately, in today's age of streaming, you can Google Spotify skip rates. If you just Google that, Spotify skip rates, it'll blow your mind at how many people skip to the next song. And so this ecosystem of how we consume music drives this short attention span that people have, unfortunately. Actually, I'm just gonna look it up right now. Okay, here we go. So of the people that listen to music on Spotify, 24.14% of them skip the, to the next song in the first five seconds. 28.97% skip to the next song in the first 10 seconds. 35.05% skip to the next song in the first 30 seconds. And 48.6% of people skip to the next song before the song is over. Now, if you're out there watching this and you're going, these stupid kids and their stupid streaming and the stupid cookie cutter songs and brah, I don't necessarily disagree with you, but it is the world that we live in right now, and this is absolutely playing a role in the downfall of rock music. Those minute and a half long intros before we get to the, the first verse, before the first lyric is even sung, is gonna play a major role in how many people are willing to consume your music. 
And so I think something that's really important right now is always giving the ear something to listen to, making sure the listener never gets bored and never wants to hit skip. Now, oftentimes what this means is we just, we get to the first verse like right away and then we get to the first chorus within 60 seconds. And that's kind of like the formula. But I do believe that there's room to just be creative and just make sure the listener is engaged all the time. So even if you have no interest in following kind of a cookie cutter song format, that's okay. Just make sure that the audience is engaged the entire time. And if you've got a straight minute of dun 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 if you have a minute of that everyone's gonna hit next. <laughs> All right, reason number four is lack of revenue created by the genre is forcing other people into other genres or out of the music industry altogether. Now this is a really complex one to unpack, so I'm not gonna go too deep into this. The combination of streaming hitting and these Spotify skip rates that I just talked about and the lack of evolution within the rock genre, all of these things are kind of coming together to play into the downfall of rock music. And unfortunately, because rock is becoming less and less of a financially viable option, it's forcing a lot of people either to just go get day jobs and throw in the towel, or it's forcing them into other genres like country and southern rock and like just into other genres, the EDM. Like there's a ton of metal dudes that are now doing EDM because it's way easier to get traction in EDM than it is in metal. And so I think being extremely smart with your finances is even more, it's, it's important across all genres if you want a career in music, but it's even more important for rock. Which leads me to point number five. The cost of creation is higher than most other genres, especially the harder and the heavier you go in the genre. Like heavy metal is not a cheap genre to produce because it's so intricate and there's so many moving parts and the songs are longer. And like, you know, editing drums when they're going D -d 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 like that, that takes way longer than just a simple like boom, you know, like it, it takes way more time to edit and to produce rock and metal than it does a lot of other genres, which makes it some of the more expensive music to create. So you couple the downward trend of the ability to monetize rock music with the higher cost of creation of music. And again, we're just, we're seeing all of this kind of play together into the downward trend of rock in general. And when people are less fairly compensated and you're still swinging a hammer at your construction job while you're rehearsing three nights a week in your rock band, it's hard to put as much time into evolving, into being creative. It's hard to just get off the ground in rock and in metal because of all of these things combined. The last one, number six, is lack of professionalism within the genre. Now, I'm not here trying to actually trash talk people within the genre. Again, my background is all rock and all metal and some of the most successful music I've ever worked on in my career has been rock and has been metal. But unfortunately, kind of due to the the attitude that you have to have in order to be in a rock band or in a metal band, there's always a little bit less professionalism than there is in a lot of other genres. Now sometimes this lack of professionalism is literally like etiquette and how you conduct yourself so, you know within the studio or within uh, on stage or whatever. But more so than that I think is business practices. It's far less common for people trying to get off the ground in a rock or a metal genre to really truly look at their band as a business. And if you want this thing to go for you and you want a career out of this music thing, you're running a business whether you like it or not. And so what that means is making smart financial decisions like we talked about earlier. It means legitimately running a business in the sense that you understand that you're offering a service or a product in exchange for money. It means recognizing that demand determines your worth. And if you wanna see more about how to charge as an artist, click on this video right here where I talk all about that. It means having prompt and professional communication skills. I mean, we could just go on and on and on and on about this. Unfortunately, rock and metal bands and artists, generally speaking, are a notch or two down on the totem pole from other genres in these departments. 
And again, this plays into all of these other things. That is the downward trend of rock. Now, my idea behind making this video was not to trash talk the genre or anyone in it. My point in making this video is hopefully opening someone's eyes to the shortcomings of the genre and then being able to be proactive about that and counteract these issues. I truly, genuinely, honestly believe that if you address every one of the things that I talked about in this video, your chances of making a career within the rock or metal genre is much, much higher. Because in my opinion, from my experience, these are the things that are holding most rock and metal artists back. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I truly appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell icon next to the subscribe tab. Give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment, or smash the thumbs down button twice if that's your style. Don't forget to hit me up on Instagram, at Colt Caparoon, and check out my website, coltcaparoon.com. Links in the description for all of that. Thanks again. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!